Today we're going to be dealing with a question that came in through our YouTube page that has to do with the three heavens that are mentioned in the Bible. And whoever asked the question is already pretty, pretty clued in as to how these three heavens operate and to how we are to designate them. The outline that they gave uh, was that the first heaven is the atmosphere, the second heaven is outer space, and the third heaven is the home of God, which is concise and brief, but I, I think quite accurate. Now the question specifically was the heaven that we look up and see where the birds fly is obviously detailed in chapter one as to how it came into existence. But what about the second and third heaven? Were they already in existence before uh, the things we read about in Genesis chapter one? So I'd like to lay a little groundwork and then try to deal with that question as, as best I can. In Genesis chapter one and verse number six, we read, and God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. So when God brought all the necessary materials into existence to create the known universe, before he formed anything, that is, g gave it shape and put things where they needed to be and so forth, uh, the universe was completely covered in water. And then on day two, as we've just read, God created space. And above the firmament, or space, or heaven, as it's called here, uh, there is water, and then below there's water as well. Now the waters below, obviously those are oceans, seas, and we're uh, very well aware of that and familiar with that. The waters that be above the heavens, and I would encourage you to look at Psalm 148 verse 4 where it talks about the heavens of heavens and the waters that be above the heavens. But you, you read there that there's waters above heavens, plural. So above the second heaven, there is a body of water according to the Bible. Now NASA put out a report just a few years back saying that they had discovered water on the outskirts, far, far outskirts of the known universe, which I, I find very interesting. That seems consistent with what the Bible has been saying all along. So in Genesis chapter one, we read where God created this open space. And if you're looking at that as just one massive open space, you call it singular heaven. But as the chapter goes on, God begins to fill that open space and it will break that singular space down into two levels, which is where we would get the idea for a first heaven and a second heaven. So in Genesis 1 verse 14, it says, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And he goes on to talk about the sun, the moon, and the stars. So that is what we would call the second heaven. Now that's not a phrase you'll find in the Bible, second heaven, but I'll show you in a moment why that is a very legitimate and accurate uh, phrase to use. Now if you continue reading in Genesis 1, you get down to verse 20. It says, And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. So now we have another mention of heaven, but this time it's referring to where the birds fly. So the first heaven, as the person who wrote in uh, mentioned, is our atmosphere where the birds are and the, and the clouds and so forth. And then the second heaven, sun, moon, and stars. But then in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, we read where Paul is having an out-of-body experience. He refers to himself in the third person. And in verse number 2, 2 Corinthians 12 and 2, it says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. Verse 3, And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. So Paul, I assume this is the occasion where he was stoned to death in Acts chapter 14 and his soul has left his body and uh, he's struggling to put words to that condition as you've read here. 
and he is taken up into what he classified as the third heaven. So if Paul is going to use the designation third, then it's completely legitimate to say first and second as well as, as we look at the three levels. What Paul saw and what he's trying to tell us about, or at least give us a glimpse of in 2 Corinthians 12, uh, as the person who wrote in mentioned, the home of God. This is his throne room. This is where you would find the cherubim and the seraphim and the 24 elders. And you read in Revelation 4, uh, a description of this place. In Revelation 4, verse 1, it says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Now, as you continue on through the chapter, you get a, a wonderful description of what God's throne room um, looks like and, of course, how John uh, was able to see this form of God sitting upon, upon the throne. So that would be the third heaven. Now, coming directly to the, the question that was asked, the first heaven obviously comes into existence uh, as we read in Genesis chapter 1. But what about the second and third? Well, the, the second heaven also came into existence in the process that we read about in Genesis 1. On the fourth day, God fills that open space, uh, what we you know, would consider the, the uh, galaxies or the solar system, outer space, however you want to term that. But he puts the sun, moon, and stars out there. So the first and second heavens, uh, those are part of the, of the creation week that we have in Genesis 1. So really the question comes down to what about the third heaven and when did it come into existence? So the answer that I'm going to attempt to give, I'll begin by giving you some verses from Job chapter 38. In verse number 6 it says, Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? And this is God asking Job, Where were you when I built everything? And in verse 7 it says, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. So when God was creating what we read about in Genesis 1, there were already angels. There were already uh, cherubim, seraphim. All of those things were already there when God created the physical universe. So it is, I believe, uh, completely reasonable to assume that the third heaven already existed. However, I, I would be careful about thinking that it's always been here. Uh, the Bible tells us that God is eternal and that everything was made by Him. And specifically, when I say Him, I'm referring to the Word, because in John chapter 1, uh, verses 1 down to 3, you read about how the Word, everything was made by Him, and was, without Him was not anything made that was made. So this third heaven, with the throne, with the cherubim, seraphim, in Colossians 1, you read about how everything was created by Christ, whether visible or invisible, uh, principalities, powers, all the spiritual beings, all of this was created by Christ. So in Genesis 1, we have the description of the first and second heaven, but there's really no mention of the third heaven being created there. And my, I think the safest assumption is that it had already been brought into existence along with those spiritual beings. However, I'm going to claim ignorance here and tell you that I don't know how long it was between the time God made the third heaven with all of its inhabitants and when God brought the physical universe with its uh, two heavens into existence, I, I, I don't know. So that may not be as much of, a, of an answer as this person was looking for, but I'm afraid that's the best I'm going to be able to do. Now, I really like the, the way that the person who gave us this question um, added at, at the end of it that regardless of the answer, it's not going to shake their faith in Christ or in the Bible. They, they realize that this is not a fundamental, foundational type of thing. Th these are interesting things to look at. They are biblical uh, topics. So sure, as we read through, we acknowledge them and we can think and talk about them. However, there are some things that we're just not going to understand until we get to the other side of glory. If this was something fundamental to our faith, then God would have given us more information about it. I do know this, that one day the trumpet will sound and we'll have all of this figured out. We'll be taking that tour of heaven and uh, our faith will have become sight. And then, who needs a YouTube video, right? We'll have it, we'll have all the answers we need at that time. 
So uh, until the trumpet sounds, we'll just have to uh, keep a few question marks and admit that there's some things we're just not going to be able to wrap our heads around. But I hope this has helped to some extent. If you have any other questions or comments about it, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. If this video has helped, you can click the like button. If you'd like to follow along with our Bible Q&A blog, you can click subscribe. Feel free to leave a Bible question in the comment section below or visit us on our Facebook page, Bible Baptist Church of Pachastruam. And if you live in town, we'd like to invite you to one of our services, and we hope to see you soon. May God bless and have a great day further.